Let's say torture is bad. Let's look at an example. United Kingdom was torturing people of the IRA. Now the premier human rights court ruled in the favor of United Kingdom saying that such a step was a necessity. Having proven that, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the need. A. The magnitude of terrorism and the importance of information and B. The nature of terrorism. With one bomb, ladies and gentlemen, you kill thousands of individuals. You may have passed moral judgments, but for one, put yourself in the shoes of a CIA agent who has responsibility towards his civilians, who has to protect the lives of individuals and is in a position where he can extract information and save lives or not extract information and let people die. What is moral in this regard? We believe saving people lives. And we believe due to this, having protection of lives is more important than these intangible morals and these intangible civil liberties that the team negative would like to propagate. Now let's talk about the importance of information. Once you have more information, you can have a greater nest for which you could carry out these enhanced interrogation techniques and are in a position to locate, find out the terrorist future plans about their fellow terrorists their current plans and their location. This will help you break these terrorist cells better. And thus, we're fulfilling the role of today that is breaking these terrorist networks down. In the example of Israel versus Public Committee Against Torture, the security, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Israel saying that these methods have made you protect your national security. Thus, we see, ladies and gentlemen, that you are fulfilling the responsibility and the importance of information today. Let's talk about the nature of these terrorists. They are hardened and ideologically driven. For example, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, novel interrogation did not work on him. After nine months, when he started using enhanced interrogation techniques, he broke down. Proves that these enhanced interrogation techniques work. And now let's quickly talk about why this torture is affected. Let's understand, terrorists are willing to die for their cause. They wish instant death, but no human being is able and is built in a way to restore pain. Thus we've seen in the past that terrorists have broken down because you have immense pain. Scientifically proven methods such as the Shabak position and sleep deprivation have published by the British Medical Journal have said that they break individuals down. Thus we have scientific evidence on the side of team of death. Now we also had important information released in the past. We had list of 700 IRA members, perpetrators of previous 85 unserved crimes. We saw the Liberty Tower bombing. We had Abdul Rahman. We got the list of 200 terrorist members after using these enhanced interrogation techniques on Abdul Rahman. And moreover, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed took responsibility for 9th level. If there is clear evidence, we believe team affirmative wins. Thank Exactly the individuals that are going to torture. 
we believe these are suspected individuals that are actively involved in combat and there is sufficient evidence that they are terrorists. One, they could be suspected individuals involved in direct contact and two, proclaimed terrorists. So if you have other evidence, you please expand what evidence exactly is going to be used. I've already told you what evidence is going to be used. One, they are actively involved in combat. Two, they are proclaimed terrorists. Okay, so you assume that every single person that's in combat knows assume information valuable well enough to, to, to infringe on these rights? We believe states, we have intelligence carried out that have been previously checked and we believe the people are able to judge in a position which terrorists to torture and which will be able to, how will you will be able to extract it. So you believe that your policy is 100% sure that no innocent people will be harmed? No policy is 100% sure ladies and gentlemen, but you still believe that the principal benefit that you arise from that policy, you will imply that. For example, certain methods of deterrence do not always work. Does not mean you let go of that policy because you believe it has benefits of the future. Thank you sir. Uh, on your second argument, you said, 
Put, your uh, put yourself in the shoes of the CIA agent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can come back to that. Put your shoes in the person that's tortured. And especially with your plan, there's going to be a lot of room for mistakes. And that person, most likely, might be innocent. And something we cannot agree on, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and then uh, they came up with third argument on the effectiveness, which we believe uh, need, we need to destroy the most, because then your case is immoral and cannot be used. So ladies and gentlemen, first of all, you said that um, uh, these people are fundamentalists, they're not afraid to die. So ladies and gentlemen, we ask you, if they're not afraid to die, something that completely ends your life and is the uh, most basic right according to you, why are they going to be subjected to torture, and why would they say something if they're so indoctrinated that they won't even want to talk, ladies and gentlemen? We also see great inefficiency in the people that are captured because high, uh, high Al Qaeda officials, for example, are hiding out in Pakistan in caves that are not found. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States usually catches footmen that do not know the essential information. After they execute the plans, they're completely cut off, especially if they have been uh, ca uh, ca uh, caught by the United by uh, the CIA or any intelligence service in the world. Um, what, uh, what is more, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of torture, uh, there's a huge propensity for these people to lie. Um, because simply, torture is so extreme, it's so hurtful, that you would want to do anything just to stop it, ladies and gentlemen. And we see that this will divert uh, the intelligence services or anybody uh, from the resources that they need to fight the crime to examining if they have lied, to checking out the lies, and especially in terrorism, if it's a ticking time bomb scenario, if you know something's coming really fast but you don't know exactly when you need to stop it, that's going to produce a lot of problems for these intelligence services as they're diverting their resources elsewhere. Um, and then you said with Mohammed, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, it really worked. You tortured him for, for nine months. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's pick a different case. Imagine it's a terrorist that doesn't know anything, or that has said everything he knows, and you're still torturing him because you think you know. Uh, because you think, because for nine months, Muhammad al, uh, Sheikh Mohammed was tortured and it worked, it will work on every single case in, uh, in this torture. And then, and then think about if that person is innocent, which your plan uh, most likely will include innocent people, that is even a worse infringement on human rights. That is even uh, that is the most unacceptable stance that there uh, that there could be. And then again, Sheikh uh, Mohammed also lied about his protege that was initiating another plan, which diverted the resources from uh, from the actual cause. So, ladies and gentlemen, for these reasons, we beg you to oppose. That's why we're debating, that's what you should show us. 
But it's still being used. But it's illegal. Okay, but um, the president issued an executive order codifying it. It's illegal because it's off the United States jurisdiction in the United States. It's illegal. It's a way to uh, pat, bypass the system, which we do not agree that is the right way. So, are rights absolute? Uh, some rights are, some rights are. Are uh, civil liberties absolute? Which civil liberties? Such as, in times of war, uh, governments may... Well, there's a major difference here because the war on terror was proclaimed by Bush. He made a lot of legislation to escape the actual uh, saying that they're the prisoners of war to make them enemy combatants so he could so they could be tortured. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't believe this is a war. So if the law is 80% effective, then you wouldn't uh, implement it. Definitely not, because the 20% are innocent. That so in that world, you would have been completely lost, lawless world. How so? Because not every law is 100% effective. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Thousands or millions of lives, and we think that that is a suitable trade-off in this case. 
What was their attack about policy? They said that when you know there is a threat, if you if you are saying that there is a lack of information, we are saying that there is information <coughs> through surveillance and other such methods, but you need more information, which is why you need these enhanced integration uh, techniques. They said, ladies and gentlemen, and this is one of their arguments. It gives incentive to Al Qaeda members to rally people to their cause. By that logic, don't have drone strikes because. Al Qaeda members can use that to rally people to your cause. Don't have this war in terror because Al Qaeda members can use that to rally people to uh, your cause. On the second level, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that even if it does give incentives to Al Qaeda members to rally people to their cause, if you don't have these methods, then the lives that will be lost by not implementing this policy is that is such a huge enough cost that we're not willing to uh, undertake it. They talk about, we talk to you about how the right to not be tortured is protected by every international law. We counted this with two examples. The European Court of Human Rights, in the case of the United Kingdom versus uh, uh, the Irish government, when the Irish government accused the United Kingdom of uh, torturing innocent IRA members, ladies and gentlemen, the justification given by the United Kingdom was that they had no other option. And the European uh, Court of Human Rights, one of the premier institutions of human rights, voted in favor of the United Kingdom. So how are you saying that uh, uh, international law applies in this case as well? And thirdly, ladies and gentlemen, there is an internal inconsistency because they are saying that on one hand, if people are not afraid to die, then why would they say something? If they are not afraid to die, why would they agree to normal interrogation methods? And on the other hand, they are saying that if they thought, uh, if they're, uh, on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, if they are afraid to die, we think that there is a difference between pain and death. If you subject people to pain, continuous pain, they will be more likely to break. And we quoted several examples, which is why you need more of Supposedly, 
70, uh, or 70 or 80 of them are guilty. Uh, out of how many? 171. So that's 50% innocence, or in those 70%, we don't actually even know that uh, they're actually guilty because without due process, we can't determine. Uh, 
to our, uh, to our uh, example, you know that a lot of these times, you know, these stories are only flipping and they have no uh, substantive uh, uh, information to tell us. And you know, and we only, uh, we only, we only torture people that you know, that can't tell, tell, can't really tell us. And they also never respond to our point that those criminals can actually lie and tell us, tell us the, uh, tell the, not the right things. And we, uh, and they and never explain the, 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 the uh, explain the, the, never respond to our point that came from the, from the lie. But that we actually divert our research to, to when, when people lie, when we have to, you know, when. when those um, the information is not true. We only divide the resource, and we're not able uh, to to put all the resources to solve the threat. So for all these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to applaud the board. Thank you. 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 Thank
lives of, of thousands. And we strongly believe it does. Now we're too late, gentlemen, which seems to be an important issue. Is it really effective? And we certainly believe that it is. Abraham Lincoln, the first issue, Abraham Lincoln, the champion of human rights, suspended habeas corpus during the Civil War. The US president today campaigned for office on the basis that he would stop state sanctioned torture, that he would close Guantanamo. But once he came into this position, where the national security rests on his shoulders, where he realizes that the, to protect, the, the protection of his civilians is his job, it is his duty and sentiment, he in fact, with the National Defense Authorization Act in 2012, codified state sanctioned torture. What does this show you, ladies and gentlemen? As we came out here and told you, when you're in a position where this, where the security of your people relies on you, what do you do? You do use state sanctioned torture. And this was um, another issue which came up, which was of innocence. Now, first of all, we told, we asked them, say, when was the last person you were quote, when the last person who was innocent, when was he tortured? There was no answer, ladies and gentlemen. And secondly, we said that we do have reasonable evidence. What about self-proclaimed terrorists like Ibn al-Zabari? What about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? What about them? They are self-proclaimed terrorists. In their videos, they come out and tell you that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed tells you he has planned 9-11. If he was sitting in front of you and you were a CIA agent and everything else has failed, keep that in mind, everything else has failed, what would you do? Now we understand that the law is not going to be completely effective. And they said if the law is not 100% effective, let's not implement it. Where would we be living then? in a completely legal black hole. <laughs> and we believe some, yes, there will be certain cases where there will be innocence, but we believe this is the cost that we have to pay because no side can argue absolute morals and no side can be perfect. Now, issue number two. Now, because, because of those reasons, we believe that the principle falls with Team Pakistan. The second issue, is it effective? And we believe that it is. And this is the analysis that we brought you from the get-go, ladies and gentlemen. The difference between instant death and prolonged pain. People do not have a high threshold to pain. Even if they are trained, there is a certain time when people will break. And we said, we came out here and told you from the start, there will be checks and balances to prevent the fact, to prevent it from going too far. And we gave you examples. We substantiated our case with examples, several examples, whereas they did not have any example at all. Secondly, gentlemen, they talked about how people might lie in certain circumstances. Well, if they do lie, you have ways to go back and verify this information and check this information. And if you find out that it is not true, then you can go back and continue to subject them to enhanced interrogation techniques. And by that time, ladies and gentlemen, they will realize if we continue to lie, this is not going to go anywhere. If we continue to lie, we will continue to be detained and we will continue to be subjected to these enhanced interrogation techniques. And that is why my father said in the cross-examination that the only way to escape is to tell the truth. And for that reason, they will tell the truth, ladies and gentlemen. And because we have an informative side that has given you a solution, an informative side that has proven to you that the solution is effective, on the other hand, a negative side that has no solution, that says that, well, if enhanced, they think that enhanced interrogation techniques won't work, but they still say that normal interrogation will work with them, they are principally inconsistent. And for all these reasons, we so proudly affirm this motion.
Vegetarian. But we have to say, we can actually harm one person to save a thousand. What we told you in our second speaker just actually explained you, we were not willing to sacrifice one innocent person to save a thousand people. And this was a utilitarian, utilitarian which was not, never responded from Team Pakistan. We said this, that we only can compare one person to another person living in a basic principle, and we never heard any response to this. Because we're saying that the great area is going to be from this situation is just too big. Because what they actually based their effectiveness on, we're going to actually elaborate on that on, on the second part, but they actually based on based on this or based on this effect on guilty people and say it's all it's not okay because what we told you that are innocent people and what they actually told from constant brothers, we do not provide examples. They want examples they just listen to them. 55% of Guantanamo is innocent. And we said torture was provided for all these people to try and come What they told us, we said an example they had to provide with us. What they also told us that the public actually provided you, that the price is just too big. We are not allowed to sacrifice our own principles, hypocrisy, and actually let, let other organizations just to have an incentive to, to fight for us even more. Because we said basic human rights we have to provide are limited in this situation, and we can only do this if the policy from Team Pakistan is 100% effective. Because what we see, actually, this is not the case, and I'm going to expand this idea on the second one. And what they told us, again, this is a war, and we have to have war principles. Ladies and gentlemen, President Obama himself told us there is no war. He said, our first speaker, Simon, explained that war on terrorism was actually the definition created by President Bush. And we actually said it is not okay for him to argue on that side. Going on to the second point, this is effective. Well, Team Pakistan, Based their effectiveness, but we're only going to have guilty people. Ladies and gentlemen, we told you, okay, maybe some guilty people will actually be uh, terrible. Then we said the gray area, the biggest gray area, we're going to have innocent people is just too much because what they base their effectiveness on, we're going to find guilty people. Ladies and gentlemen, they actually told us that they're going to, just because they do, because they're in the same place as some terrorists, just, they, all, they already know some information. What we told you on that point, we told you we already that it's assumption to make that there's only guilty people. We told you that, we already told you, and then what they actually elaborated on the idea that no law is 100% perfect. Yes, we agree, but what we see in the trials, but these uh, people are actually just, we said we have a trial. We have in the first place, we have a trial with due process in this process. We have to have on team opposition if we want to have torture in the first place, because it, it's, it's principally wrong to say that it's okay just without any evidence at all because the only evidence from Team Pakistan was that they are they are guilty. But also what they told us we never responded to our fight. People lie, ladies and gentlemen. We said that's a huge issue. And what was actually told us that if they lie they're gonna continue in interrogation. But ladies and gentlemen, where is the line with torture? They never provide actually the definition. And what we said when, when, when does the torture going to end? And we said a huge issue that they have to have. And they actually conflict themselves, themselves in the plan. When they actually told us that this is going to be immediate harm, what we see is not only immediate actually affecting us, if, we, if they actually provide themselves an evidence for nine months of interrogation, actually brought some information. So where is the immediate point in this debate? We were asked about our proposition. Also, what they told us that only they never respond about about our footman uh, point when we told you that it is impossible to find only high officials. We told you some in case people would simply know won't know the information, and we're gonna have people tortured for no reason at all. No response to this one. Also, what we said contradiction without the case. We we heard that people are gonna <coughs> But again, they talk about the nature of terrorism, that they're not afraid of death and pain. So listen, let's, let's please uh, as an example, when is the light and when are they going to break? Because what, what we see is that, because we see an unnecessary torture throughout their case. So ladies and gentlemen, because we see that no justice, we have no justice right to torture people on the basis that we have to compare one person to another person's for liberty, and then we see that there is no effect at all because of, because of the assumption that only going to be guilty people, we've to pose a motion on the justice side.